800 shows. We've laughed together. We've cried together. I never thought I'd be doing the show this long. Follow your dreams. People who claim to be smarter than you will tell you it's impossible. As I hit 800 shows, I'm reminded of KGON 92.3 in Portland, Oregon. I didn't know what a podcast was, so I presented my idea to a local radio station. I'll never forget the program director's words to me. He said, Wes, you got a terrible voice, and your idea for a show is ridiculous. I can say, after 40 years of broadcasting experience, no one, I repeat, no one will ever sit and listen to people talk about their Bigfoot encounters. Well, Mr. 40 years of broadcasting experience, we'll just see about that. What are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya! Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh Uh-oh. You know, both of us agreed as we sat there one night and had cigarettes and coffee, you know. There was no damn bear. I'm Grover Krantz. I'm a professor of anthropology here at Washington State University. Well, I'm satisfied that this Bigfoot thing exists. This, th- this thing, I got to notice in its eyes. Its eyes was real, real evil, real sinister looking. You know, the look it was giving me. It looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind and it either heard me or smelt me and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up and that that shocked me. I spent a career in the Navy as, a, as what we call a cryptolinguist. <laughs> I started playing them and immediately I recognized that there was language there. I wish somebody could tell me what they were trying to say or what they were saying. That's something I've been wanting to know for 40 some odd years now and I still don't know what they were asking me. Once we come around the bend in the, in the creek, there one stood across the creek from us. And of course, Roger's horse just went berserk. And as I, as he got up, I was able to get up and control him until I went around the other side and uh, got the camera out of the saddlebag and then I turned my horse loose. And he grabbed the saddle bag cover, uh, one flap that he had it on her and unflapped it and got the camera out. Hello, my name is John Bindernagel. I'm a, a wildlife biologist. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you. Uh, Tonight, we're going to be chatting with Eric and Ryan, and they come to us from Washington State. 16 years ago, the guys were in the backyard at Ryan's house, and they encountered a very strange creature, and a lot of weird things happened during that encounter. And I was talking to the guys earlier, and we were talking about what happened to them, and and to me, it's very strange. The guys feel like they ran into an alien. I, when you hear their encounter, you can kind of see why they would say that. Uh, it's a very strange one. I'll let the guys go into it tonight. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. 
My email address is Wes at SasquatchChronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out SasquatchChronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Eric to the show. Eric, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, man, I appreciate you being here. I also want to welcome uh, Ryan to the show. Ryan, thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. Thank you. And Eric, if you would just kind of start from the beginning, kind of tell us what you guys were doing and walk us into what happened. All right. 2005, it was kind of a weird time. We'd all, me, Ryan, and our other friend Kelly had all just moved back home kind of right after college time. And so it was summer and we all grew up in the same cul-de-sac and we had been out playing softball all day, just, you know, uh, messing around, hitting the ball around, playing catch at the uh, local high school. And at the end of that, uh, with all of our friends, we're like, well, let's all go home, you know, clean ourselves up and, uh, head out and everybody meet up at Applebee's in a few hours. And so me and Ryan and Kelly had, uh, driven together since we all lived in the same cul-de-sac and when we got back, Kelly went to his house and me and Ryan were like, well, hey, you want to go smoke a cigarette and have a beer? So we went to the Ryan's backyard, you know, having a cigarette, just hanging out. And like, you know, we were not drunk or on drugs or anything like that. Um, we were just, you know, chilling. A little bit of time goes by and Kelly calls us and asks, like, if we're ready to go. And we're like, oh, man, we've just been hanging out, chilling here in the backyard. And he's like, OK, I'll be up in a couple minutes. So he comes up. And we're all just hanging out in the backyard. And so one thing about Seattle is we're pretty far north. And so the sun goes down kind of late, you know, in the summertime. And so as we're sitting there, the sun starts to kind of go down. And so it's probably about 9, 9.30. And uh, it's just right at that dusk time. And we didn't have any lights on or anything except for from the kitchen. Um, so we're sitting in Ryan's backyard. And... Ryan's backyard, right directly out of the kitchen, is a little like concrete cement patio. And then along the back of the house is another cement um, slab, basically like a basketball court. They have a basketball hoop at the end. The basketball hoop to the um, patio table where we were sitting at is about 25, maybe 30 feet. And they've been doing some yard work. So there was a wheelbarrow turned sideways. I think probably if in, in case it rained, because obviously we're in Seattle, um, to not catch rain. So it was turned sideways underneath the basketball court. And then there was like a shovel leaning up against the house and, you know, just normal gardening sort of tools. And then so Ryan's backyard, it kind of goes up a bit of a hill and then it flattens out at the top. It's not a big hill, but it's a slight incline. And in the corner in the corner of the fence is a a shed. It's a normal size shed. You can stand up inside. It's where they keep their lawnmower, all that kind of stuff. And then in this area, you know, there's a lot of tall evergreen trees and, you know, like all the houses have trees in between them and in the yards and all this stuff, very tall evergreen trees. So as we're sitting there and like I said, the sun starts to kind of go down. It's at like just dusk time. Um, we noticed that there was these two lights in the trees. It looked like somebody is like, it looked like somebody was holding two flashlights and spinning them in circles next to each other, like two circles spinning in the right, right next to each other. And we are like, that's really weird. Like it was weird enough to take note of, but not weird enough to like freak us out. But we were like, that's weird. Like these are tall trees, you know? And so we were kind of speculating, it's like headlights or whatever, but no, you know, we were like, no, but not headlights, but whatever, you know, we didn't really think too much of it. And then like maybe two minutes later, um, from behind the wheelbarrow came some creature crawling out and it was like coming out really slow and like trying to be stealthy or something. And the way where I was sitting, I was facing directly at it. Ryan was to my right facing the backyard and Kelly's back was to it. Um, and so as soon as I see this thing start crawling out, I kind of stand up and I'm like, what the F is that? And then it, turns and looks at me with this oh shit look (laughs) you know like like it was it was as surprised to see us as we were to see it and as soon as it looked at us it 
immediately took off, ran up the, the hill, and it sounded like a horse on a racetrack. This thing was heavy. It was strong. It was powerful. You could tell. And it ran like hands over feet. Like it was bam, bam, bam. All the way up the hill, jumped over the shed into the trees where the lights were. And so we were freaked out. We're like, what the heck was that? And like we're all like, w w you know, we didn't know what to do. So I grabbed the shovel because my immediate reaction is, if, if whatever this thing was, if it comes back, I'm going to, you know, defend myself. Ryan reaches inside and grabs a flashlight. We, me and Ryan start walking up the hill, like, to investigate. And Kelly's standing, staying back there. He's like, what are you guys doing? Like, this, you guys are crazy. <laughs> like, I'm not going up there. What the hell was that thing? And so, you know, he, we start walking up. I know me and, me and Ryan are kind of like that i guess you know we'll go and investigate something and we were scared we were scared though we were terrified we we're freaked out so we we're going up and i, I it was kind of like like scooby-doo like back to back like i'm holding the shovel he's got the flashlight and we're like inching our way shivering up the you know shaking in our boots up the hill and then as we get towards the shed uh kelly he's like you know guys i don't want to scare us any more than we already are but i just saw the most amazing shooting star and so we were like, you know, forget this. Let's just like go meet everybody at Applebee's and like never talk about this again. Cause we didn't know what was going on. We were freaked out and yeah. So, <laughs> so that was pretty much like the event that happened. Yeah. That's insane. I, I mean, you guys aren't like in downtown Seattle, uh, you guys are kind of on the outskirts, but you know, Ryan, from your point of view, what did you end up seeing? Uh, well, I pretty much saw the same thing that Eric saw, but uh, not as much detail. I think I kind of went into a uh, fight or flight mode, and I was seeing how quickly I could get to the, the back door of the house because I saw how big it was, and I thought if if it charges at us, you know, I don't I don't want to fight. I want to run for the house and hopefully get inside and hope that the glass door, you know, stops it from getting in. But uh, it felt like we were staring at it forever and it was probably only about two or three seconds before it took off running and uh eric was right it, it sounded like a horse i i've never heard anything like it or seen anything like it but i didn't get a good look at the face like eric did i was more kind of focused on the body and making sure it didn't pivot towards us i was just freaked out um so after i made it to the shed it jumped over the shed into the tree and the shed's about eight feet tall so i figured you know it's not a dog a dog can't do it but uh i was pretty panicked it, it was it was crazy um i still till this day have no clue what it was but uh you know i'm not a big believer in crazy stuff but that that was crazy and i can't explain it it was it was bizarre yeah and i know that uh eric got the best look at it because he was at that angle where he was face to face with it and i'll ask him here in a moment but Ryan, you're kind of at a different angle. You're seeing this thing pop out. Um, can you kind of describe what you saw? Well, I, I guess, I mean, from what I remember, like I said, in that moment, you're kind of scared. So you're not really focused on the detail. You're just kind of thinking, oh, my God, what am I looking at? I would say in size, it would be, from what I remember, about the size of a what, what you think a cougar would be. I, I haven't seen a cougar really in the wild, but, uh, it was, it was about that size. Uh, I, I believe it had longer hair than the cougar. It, it was, uh, I, like I said, I didn't look at the face. I just knew it was large and it was heavy by the way it ran. And, uh, I was kind of actually upset because in the moment, I wish I would have focused more on what I was looking at instead of, you know, planning my escape route. But I, I was, I was freaked out. I, I remember I looked at the glass door and thinking, you know, that's where I'm going if this thing comes towards us because uh, I don't think we'd have much of a chance fighting it. And uh, and then luckily it took off and it ran towards a shed up in my parents' backyard and uh, and it just disappeared. I, we went up there. It made no sounds after it cleared the shed and we couldn't hear it in the tree. We thought it for sure it'd be in the tree. And and uh, once we got close, we decided, you know, that's close enough just in case it drops down on top of us. So we just we took off. And yeah, like, like Eric said, we went to Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, eating good in the neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> well, let me ask you, was it on two legs or was it on four legs? No, it was on four legs. It was definitely four legs. And uh, it just, um, it was fast. I mean, like, 
like like I said, it felt like we were staring at it for about a minute straight when really it was about two seconds before it took off. But it was just um, it was just really weird. It was unreal. I, I can't explain it. I have never seen anything like it uh, after that. I, I never saw anything like it before. It was just uh, a weird, creepy looking monster thing. I don't know what it was, to tell you the truth. I just have I, no explanation. Yeah, and you guys are in your 40s now. So, you know, back in 2005, you guys are like in your mid-20s. Um, I'm, I'm really curious, uh, Eric, what is it that you saw? So the creature comes out from behind the wheelbarrow. You guys make eye contact. For the audience, can you kind of describe what you saw? I looked at this thing dead in the eyes, like, again, about 25, maybe 30 feet away. And it looked like it had a human face. Like if I were to say, you know, if I were to classify it, I would say it was a, some kind of a primate. Um, it was very broad shouldered. Um, like I said, I, I watched this thing take off. It went from zero to 60 in a, in a split second. Like it was, it was hauling up that hill. And again, didn't have a tail, had kind of short legs. It looked like it would go on two feet, but if it did, you know, like very broad, long, uh, broad shoulders, very muscular, long arms, short legs. And like it didn't really have much of a neck, you know, like the, a round head and it had fur all over its body. Very short, um, but like kind of a goldenish or tannish color. And, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I looked at it dead in the eyes and it looked at me and it gave me that like, oh shit, look in its face. And <laughs> yeah, uh, Thank you. That's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, that's interesting. So as you were looking at this thing in the face, you would describe it more animal-like, more like a uh, like you're looking at a gorilla? The best way I can describe the face is it looked like a human face. Like It was surreal. It would look like I was looking at a human face, but like it had short fur all over it. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't wearing clothes. It had short fur all over the body except for the face. And so, yeah, it was, yeah, I guess it, if I were to describe it, like, yeah, human face. Like, I guess that's, I don't know. Yeah, I'm very curious about the the size of the creature. So when this thing came out, I know um, Ryan was saying it was somewhere, you know, about the size of a cougar. So it's not like this thing came out and you guys are face-to-face -face with King Kong. Mm, no, not at all. Yeah, it was probably, if it were a stand-up at all, it looked like, and again, you know, like Ryan said, this did happen pretty quickly. But, you know, I got a pretty good look at this thing. And it, it, I'd say if it were a stand on two feet, it would probably be four or five feet, maybe tall. Um, you know, it wasn't like, you know, six or eight, you know, it was probably four or five. Um, but like I said, powerful, man, this thing ran and it was heavy. It was strong and we were scared. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. Um, did it, um, it makes you wonder what it was doing over by the wheelbarrow, you know, and that's exactly. And like, you know, I, 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 I speculated about this and gone over this in my head so many times. And that's why I like the lights in the trees, like, you know, I, I've had, this has been 16 years now and you know, I'm, I'm a totally rational person and I'm, I'm rational enough to realize that the lights in the trees, the creature and the shooting star that Kelly saw could be three completely unrelated events that in my head I put together, you know, like, but at the time, it felt like my gut instinct was like, this is like an alien or something doing reconnaissance, like in the movie signs, you know, like that was the first thing that went through my head. Like they were like, Hey, come over here. We'll pick you up. Cause like I said, we were just sitting there kind of in, you know, we weren't being loud. We were just hanging out and like, maybe they didn't know we were back there. And then this thing came, you know, crawling out because it's going to meet up with its ride. <laughs> and then I like, for a better, I don't know what else, how else to say it, you know? So this thing comes out crawling out and it's like, oh crap, there are people back here, you know? And then it takes off and like, when we say it jumped over the shed, I mean, it cleared the shed. It jumped over the shed into the trees and in, in the trees were the ones where the lights were shining in. And so that's what made me really think like, maybe they're like, hey, we'll come pick you up over here or something. Like, and again, this is all speculation. I have no proof of this, but you know, all I can say, I can report is what we saw and what happened. And Kelly never went into more detail about the amazing shooting star he saw. Um, 
but you know, he was pretty freaked out. We were all freaked out. And so, you know what I mean? Like the, to us, maybe that was like what some craft or something flying away, you know, <laughs> like I said, I'm a pretty rational person. And it's just, when you see something like this and you're like, what do you make of it? You know, like you try to rationalize with things that you know, and, you know, like we grew up here in the Pacific Northwest. Like I've seen a cougar before. I know this was not a cougar. You know, I've seen bears before. This wasn't a bear. This wasn't a, you know, this was nothing that I had ever seen before. And, you know, we grew up in that area. Our families still live in those same houses. And never before or since then have we seen a creature like that in that area. Like we're very familiar with the, the wildlife in that area. Yeah, and I think being from Washington State, much like myself, guys, you know, the cougars are all over Washington State. Rarely will you ever see one, but we're known for that they're out there. And you guys would have known right away if it was a cougar. And generally, cougars don't like to be surprised, and they rarely run when you surprise them. Um, I think you guys would have been in really, really big trouble. But you guys know what a cougar is. I'm curious about the lights that you guys saw um, if you would, would you describe them? I, I caught that you guys said that they were spinning. Yeah, it looked like somebody it, it looked like somebody had two flashlights. They were just white lights. It looked like somebody had two flashlights and they were like spinning them in circles. Like if you were to hold two flashlights and spin them both in circles, that's what it looked like over the top of the trees. And like so we were like, that's weird, you know, like I've I don't know who would be shining, you know, flashlights in the top of the tree at 9:30 at night. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, it's not impossible that somebody would be doing that, but, but you know, it's 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 weird, especially given how tall those trees are. And then you know, you think about things like, well, if they were on the ground shining it up, you know, there would be maybe a more of an oval shape because you know, in 2005 we didn't have like LEDs and really those kind of powerful lights. You know what I mean? And so. You know, you, I don't know, it just didn't make any sense. Like, so we were trying to make sense of things. You know, you, your rational brain kicks in. And you're like, well, there's got to be some some rational explanation for this. And so, you know, we were like, maybe it's headlights, maybe it's this and that. And that. we were like, nah, who knows, whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, but it just looked like two lights spinning in circles. And not like not like huge circles, but like, like little circles just making at the top of the tree. Yeah. And like they were right side by side. And yeah, it was just, it was... It was weird. Ryan, let me ask you, when you saw these lights, what did you think that they were? Well, initially, we um, we have like a hill behind our house. And I thought that maybe uh, somebody had their brights on or coming down that hill and it was shining into the tree. Uh, but the way they were moving, that was my initial thought. The way they were moving, I was like, okay, that can't be possible. And then I thought maybe one of our neighbors were on the deck and had like those really bright flashlights and we're going around in circles. And like Eric said, we didn't really think anything of it initially. It was just two lights going around in circles. It could have been literally anything, you know, and we're surrounded by houses over there too. And so, uh, I thought maybe somebody was on their deck just kind of playing around or whatever. Um, until that, the incident with the thing crawling out behind, then, you know, I was kind of like, this is just really bizarre. And uh, I really didn't want too much more to do with any of it. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of there. But uh, yeah, it was it was weird. You know, I, I'd never seen. I've my, we've had the house for thirty five years now, and uh, I, I've never seen anything like it in the trees till this day. In fact, my parents still live there. So um, yeah, I, I I I can't explain it other than flashlights. You know, that'd be my only rational explanation. Um, yeah, it, it was bizarre. The whole the whole incident was quick and, and very weird. <laughs> yeah, well, all encounters are weird. Um, you know, anytime you see something that shouldn't really exist, it, it's bizarre. And the lights fascinate me. I know you guys kind of just started listening to the show, but uh, in a lot of encounters, people who have these things on their property, they'll talk about the lights. And what they are, you know, I have no idea. But it does get brought up a lot in conversation when you're talking about Sasquatch in, in general. And in your guys' encounter, uh, this creature or entity, whatever it was, actually runs towards the lights. It jumps up on the, the shed and, and runs towards the lights. Uh, I'm curious, Ryan, after all these years, what is it that you think you ran into? Well, you know... Eric and I, over the years, we, we talk about it almost every time we're together or bring it up in some 
way, shape, or form. And uh, you know, the, my the only thing that not the only thing. I mean, if it's not an animal, I would say the whole thing kind of felt more alien to me more than anything else. I mean, if I had to say something that was not rational, but um, I do believe in this universe, there's more than just us. I just don't know if those things are have made it to Earth or whatever, but it was such a bizarre thing. It's hard to rationalize it with saying, oh, it's some you know big animal that is never in the federal way neighborhoods. It just, it couldn't have been a cougar. I mean, I looked at it well enough to know it wasn't just a, an animal from the ravine down the street. It was, uh, you know, we had coyotes that were, you know, killing cats in the area, but it was, it was way bigger than a coyote. I mean, I just, uh, like I said, the only thing I could really think of is, is maybe some deformed animal or maybe some kind of, you know, if you want to go sci-fi alien type thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, like I said, I don't really, we, we always joke around and call it Chupacabra just because we don't have a name for it. Uh, we just thought that, you know, it, I don't know, that's probably the best name we could come up with. You know? So, um, but yeah, it was, it was big and freaky. Yeah. And there's, there is a story behind the, why we call it Chupacabra as well, but we can get into that if you'd like. Yeah, if you would, Eric. I mean, kind of tell us about that. I know when you and I first spoke, you you said that uh, for the longest time you thought you had run into the Chupacabra, and I'm curious why you thought that. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> the reason we, we kind of, like, okay, first of all, at this point, you know, looking back at these things, I, I, I try to joke around about it and have fun because, you know, if, if you don't, it kind of drive you crazy. And... <laughs> So we, I, I called the Chupacabra back at that time, maybe a year later, um, I was working with a friend of mine who's from Santiago, Chile. And he had told me that his grandmother lived in the north of Chile and that when all of the Chupacabra sightings happened, his grandma lived in that area. And he said, you know, a lot of people make fun of it. He's like, but that was real. He's like, you know, he, he was insistent, like that was real. Like, I lived there. My grandma was from there, and the chupacabra was real. And so, on like a Sunday afternoon, I was watching TV, and like, I'm 95% sure it was the National Geographic channel. And there was a like a special about chupacabra. And so, I was like, oh, I'll watch this. It'll give me something to talk to my friend about on Monday morning, you know? So, as I'm watching this show, it was they're start, they're, they're, they're talking about in South America the sightings and how most of the sightings started with lights in the trees. And I was like, well, that's really weird, you know, like, but the, the description of these creatures that they, they were seeing in South America were very like reptilian with like spikes on the back, red eyes. They'd see them in the tree and all these kind of things. And I was like, well, that the description doesn't fit with what we saw. So, you know, I didn't really think much of it. And, uh, but then as the, the special was going, they start talking about, oh, there's been more and more sightings further and further north. And they start talking about this girl in, like, Arkansas or someplace who saw something. And on the screen, they showed an artist, like, depiction of what this girl saw. And I'm telling you, when they flashed the picture on the screen, my body went numb. It was exactly what we saw. I picked up my phone, you know, numb. I pick up my phone. I call Ryan immediately. And pardon my French, my French, but I said, uh, he, uh, he picks up the phone and I say, it's Chupacabra, dude. And he just goes immediately without missing a beat too. This is why like, I know that like it affected him in a similar way that it affected me. Um, he just knew exactly what I was talking about. Like immediately he's like, well, I don't know, man, you know, maybe I was thinking like he was maybe like a Fox or something, you know, like, you know, cause again, we were trying to rationalize this thing. And I said to him, I said, dude, you know what we saw? Like that was no Fox. And he said, you're right. That was no Fox. And so, you know, like I guess I, I kind of like to joke around and call it the Chupacabra and kind of have fun with it. Um, I said, I don't know if what we saw was Chupacabra, but, in that special, whatever that girl saw, that artist picture was like exactly what we saw. So, it, you know, it was it was really weird. And I, I've tried to find that special. I like wrote emails to National Geographic and all the you know in Science Channel, and I think they had a Destination America channel. I was trying to find the special, 
because back then, you know, we didn't have TiVo. I had like a flip phone that was all pixelated. I couldn't take, really take a picture of anything. You know, this is 2005, 2006. And, uh, but it, it, they kept directing me to those, is it real series? But that was not what we saw. You know, that, that show came out later after that other show. And it's almost like this special like disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. Like I watched it like three times and I, I like, cause every time it came on, it's like, I, that's the thing we saw. That's the thing we saw. And, but then it's like, I never saw that special again. I couldn't find it on any of their websites. Like I tried Googling it, you know, I've, I've tried everything I could to find this special. It's like, it disappeared. It's pretty, pretty weird. Yeah. And you, as you and I were talking the other day, Eric, I was telling you, you know, I think the Chupacabra, that term gets used a lot to, as kind of a blanket for everything. And the Chupacabra it really depends on your geographic location uh, as opposed to what people think it is. I would say most of the time, uh, the Chupacabra is described as canine or reptilian, kind of like what you were saying. Uh, that's most of the descriptions. And a lot of times people describe it as being hairless. And that doesn't really fit with what you guys saw. And I'm curious, after all these years, I know that you don't know and I don't know what you guys ran into. But what is your opinion? What is it that you think you saw that day? You know, it, it's, I, I, you know, I, nowadays when I think about this, you know, your memory will try to tell you things over time. It'll try to change things to make it make sense or whatever. And so I, I put myself back or I try to put myself back in the situation when it happened and, you know, trust my gut and like, how did I feel in that moment? And I mean, like I said, you know, I've seen bears, I've seen all these different wild animals in, in nature and nothing ever left me with this feeling that this thing did, you know, like I, I lived in Puyallup for like three years shortly after that. And I would drive down these roads is a little bit more rural. And I'm telling you, man, like I would, I get these like almost PTSD. Like, I hope I don't see that thing, you know, or like, I've never thought that about anything else that I'd ever seen, but that thing, it stuck with me. Like that incident stuck with me to a point where I almost had like post-traumatic stress or something. And so <laughs> If I were to say, like, and I, I don't want to sound crazy, you know, that's that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, I, I see here, I, you know, you feel weird saying these things sometimes. But if I were to say what I think it was, like, honestly, like, maybe it was an alien doing reconnaissance, like, in the movie Signs. You know, like, that was my first initial instinct. I was like, you know, like, it was, I don't know, like, you know, like, it seemed like there's they're like hey we'll pick you up over here and they shine the lights on the trees like hey this is the spot and so it was meeting them there and like it ran it jumped into those trees and then maybe like i said what kelly saw the light you know was the craft flying away i mean that's at this point that's the only thing that really makes sense to me just because it's like you know I, i've tried to tell myself like it had to have been something else but then it's like no it wasn't i know what i saw you know yeah, I know the first time you and I spoke, Eric, you'd brought up the movie uh, Signs, and it's a creepy movie. You know, those entities are running around on that farm, and they're so fast, and they're so quick. It looks very unnatural, and I can kind of see after this experience why you guys would say, we think it was an alien. You know, I mean, I, I would probably think the same thing, and you may be right about that. Uh, you know, seeing something that's four feet tall jump over an eight-foot-tall uh, Shed must have seemed unnatural when you watched it do that. Did it seem natural to you? It did not seem natural. No, that seemed like, like you know, it, it left that just that feeling. You know, like unless you've you've experienced something, it, it's hard to explain. It's like it, like I said, it sticks with you in a different way. You know, like like Ryan was just saying, he saw a bobcat a couple weeks ago and you know you don't see those very often they're around you know but they stay pretty hidden same thing with cougars you don't really see cougars you know they stay pretty hidden um but when you see stuff it's like wow that's cool but it, it doesn't stick with you in that same way that this did this really felt unnatural it felt like there was something very strange about it um <laughs> you know like supernatural almost you know like and but it was a physical thing. Like I said, we heard it. 
that was one of the distinct things of how hard it ran on the ground. Like it was a heavy, powerful creature. And I don't know, like it was, yeah, <laughs> we were freaked out, man. Yeah, I get it. I definitely get it. Brian, you know, has there been any, uh, this is 16 years ago. Has there been anything else that's happened at the house? No, nothing, anything like that. Um, I, I've never seen anything like it before, and I haven't seen, fortunately, anything like that after. It's um, a pretty just quiet, normal neighborhood. Um, I don't think I've seen anything but a coyote that was, you know, kind of bizarre to see around the house. But other than that, no, that that was it. The only time. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever tell your folks, Ryan, about what you guys saw that day? Oh, yeah. We told them. Yeah, we told them they kind of laughed it off and you know my mom said oh that's that's pretty weird you know and i think they probably just assumed that we were partying or drunk or something but we were completely sober so i mean you know they were they weren't too worried about it yeah well i really appreciate you guys coming forward and kind of sharing this and ryan you know i ask everyone uh, and there's no wrong answer of course but what do you think sasquatch is i i, I believe from you know just from watching shows on it i think there was one recently on netflix that it just kind of looks like a maybe a big hairy primate um like i said i've i'm kind of one of those people that if i haven't seen it with my own eyes i don't really believe it you know i i know there's weird stuff out there but like uh i've never seen a ghost i've never seen a sasquatch you know the only weird thing that's ever happened to me was that night in the backyard seeing this uh this thing come out, which, you know, I, I don't know what it was, but, you know, I, I believe Sasquatch could possibly be out there. It'd be hard for him to not be seen at this point with the cameras that everybody has. But, um, yeah, th that's about it. Yeah. And that's definitely a fair answer. But as far as what you guys saw that night, kind of in your heart, you feel like you ran into an alien. Uh, yeah. If I had, you know, like I rationally, I still tell myself it was, some deformed big animal but um it, it, the, with the way everything happened with the lights with the shooting star with whatever this thing was that didn't look like any animal i've ever seen ever um i would i would say alien would be the second or actually probably the most most reasonable reasonable explanation for what we saw i guess you know I, I can't come up with anything it's been what 15 16 years and still that's about as good as i can do <laughs> Yeah, I hear you, man. I, I definitely understand where you're coming from on it. Uh, Eric, let me ask you, what what do you think that uh, Sasquatch is? Well, you know, I also have to say, you know, like, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, like, there, there's sometimes kind of a stigma with some of these things, which is why, you know, like, it, it's sometimes hard to share these things because because of the stigma and so you feel you feel like a crazy person when you've seen these things sometimes and you're telling people these things and it's like no i saw something i i don't know what it was and you know this i don't know um but if i were to if i were to say what i think that sasquatch or bigfoot is um it's possible you know it's like a a branch of the human you know, like a, a Gigantopithecus or Gigantopithecus or something like that, um, or possibly an ape that nobody has seen. I mean, it's possible um, that it is an alien, you know, that maybe these are some kind of alien creature that come down and, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a pet of some gray aliens or it's, a, you know, there's so many possibilities. Like, I know I've read things before where they said that, you know, they were Native American uh, shaman who lived out in the woods and things like that. And there's like, you know, all of these different stories. Because really, when this happened to us, it really kind of piqued my interest. And I started researching, like, what could this have been? You know, and so I, I, can't, I read a lot of the sort of lore around Sasquatch. But, you know, as far as our actual encounter the real feeling I got was that it was alien. Like that was more the feeling I got than anything else. Like, I don't, I don't think it was a ghost, you know, I don't think it was anything like that. I, I really felt like there was something alien about this. Yeah. I know that uh, Ryan kind of feels that way too, as well. He was mentioning that. And I'm very curious on why you guys feel that way. You know, this entity, let's go with that. Uh, that you guys saw the face looked very human like obviously the body didn't but 
do you mainly feel like it was alien because of the lights? Is is that kind of why you lean that way? Yeah, I think that really the lights. Um, you know, because again, it's like there's the 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 way that everything happened. You know, it's like it, it's entirely possible as a coincidence. But to see the lights in the trees, to see the creature jump into those trees specifically those trees you know that this is one of those things like it could be a coincidence but that's that's weird and then of course to have kelly see that a most amazing shooting star you know this for those three things to happen and in that order and so close together that's what really made me like think that it was something alien and you know i i've i've um i've also read that a lot of times um People have reported UFO sightings in the same time that Sasquatch sightings sort of happened. And, you know, and I, I don't know how true those are, but, you know, um, again, I've read that. And so I'm like, well, maybe that's what we saw. Maybe that's why these things happened in those order, you know, in, around the same time. Maybe they are connected, you know. Yeah, and it's a fair answer. Like I was saying, Eric, I get where you guys are coming from. You know, you're seeing this weird twirling lights in the trees and then you guys see this entity or creature whatever it was and then your friend mentions the the most amazing shooting star he's ever seen i i get where you guys are coming from it's weird there's a lot of weird things that go on with um sasquatch too as well this could have been an alien you know who knows uh, but with regard to Sasquatch, there's a lot of weird things that go on. And anyone who tells you any different is probably lying to you or they're so delusional in the fact that they want it to be an ape so bad, they they refuse to look at anything else. I would imagine over the years, you know, going back and hanging out with Ryan, uh, just seeing that shed would bother me. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we've, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Like I, said, I just turned 40 years old and I've seen a lot of weird things in my life. And, you know, we used to get in a lot of adventures and we've seen a lot of weird things and, you know, you can't, you can't live your life afraid. You know what I mean? Like uh, <laughs> as far as like, you know, you got to face fears and otherwise it's like, you know, you can't be shut up in your house all the time, you know? And so going to Ryan's house, like, I've, you know, I've been over there, birthdays, all these kind of things, Christmases. And, you know, we go in the backyard and yeah, I think about it and we're there, but, it's, it's one of those things like it happened. What are you going to do about it? You know, like I, I, I don't know what to, what else to say. You know, I can't, I'm not like, Oh man, I'm never going to go to Ryan's backyard again. Cause I saw something weird one time, you know? Um, yeah. And I love your attitude on it, Eric. And I think that's, you know, if you can keep that attitude, it'll get you far in life. And, you know, I realize that the same didn't physically threaten anyone, but in the same breath, you're seeing something that really shouldn't exist and it really is an amazing account when you stop and think about something, you know, roughly four feet tall, jumping over an eight foot tall uh, shed. If you think about like the ceilings in your home, in your average home, it's about eight feet. And that's a big jump. Yeah, it was an amazing jump. Like that's the whole thing is like, um, like I said, it didn't even touch the shed. It jumped over the shed, like over it into the trees. <laughs> like, and that's like, it's like, it was such a, like a, a crazy thing to see, you know, it was just, that's why we're like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't I don't know what else it could be, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on to share it. I mean, it really was a cool account, probably not so much for you guys at the time, but uh, it was really fascinating to sit and listen to what happened to you guys. And Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and share what happened to you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. And Eric, thanks so much for coming on, man. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Hey, you know, thank you so much for hearing us out and hearing our story. You know, we just really are, I wouldn't know, I don't know if we're really looking for answers so much as just uh, uh, validation, I guess, <laughs> you know, if that makes sense. It's kind of like, we just, we know what we saw and we hope that our story can help other people come to grips with maybe what they saw, you know. Yeah, without a doubt. I appreciate it again, guys. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance to check out sasquatchchronicles.com, you can become a member and get additional shows. I'll leave you with this. Follow your dreams. And when the critics tell you it can't be done, punch a hole in the ceiling and touch the sky. 